everybody and welcome back to the WTF1 podcast post-Brazilian qualifying edition. Yes, we are here on YouTube as well. So hello, big wave. My goodness me, do we have some things to talk about in this one, don't we? My goodness me. I uh, I, I have been smiling for the last 15 minutes, if not longer, uh, and plenty to talk about. Of course, Tommy, the WTF1 founder, is alongside us, uh, feeling very much the same way. And wow, Tommy, what are your first thoughts? My first thoughts are the discussion that we just had before we started, which is that has somehow have the same number of polls as Mercedes this year. We've been waiting for it like something like a shock result. Right. And all I wanted was, you know, at least something like a midfield podium or something. It's almost like all that energy of us not getting those midfield podiums and things is all like the incredible chaos has just come into one moment and a Haas has managed to be on pole while the other Haas is last. Yeah. Let's start earth? with the other Haas because we'll go through Q1, Q2, Q3. Nice chronological order because this qualifying session genuinely was the best you could wish for in terms of conditions. Now, a lot no. of people think, oh, yeah, you want heavy rain, you want really difficult conditions. Yes, that can provide a bit of craziness, don't get me wrong. But this, these kind of conditions were amazing because you had really slippery, getting better and constantly changing. So Q2 was probably the driest, wasn't it, in terms of session that we had. But even yeah. then it was getting better and better towards the end. And you had the likes of Fernando Alonso going fastest and Nicholas Latifi going fastest in Q1 at one point and still not managing to make it through. Uh, so it was Latifi, Zhou Guan Yu, Bottas, Sonoda, and Schumacher that didn't make it out of the bottom five, which, to be fair, if you if you didn't watch Quali and just looked at the results, you'd go, oh, I must have been bone dry in Q1. Yeah, because Decent. Latifi did well. Yeah, Latifi apart did well. From that, apart everything from that, everything is go... fairly normal-ish, I guess. Um, yeah, Latifi was P1 in that session at one point as well. Went fastest. I saw a few screenshots come in. He was quickly displaced, but I thought for one second, Nicholas Latifi, this might be the turning point in his career. Um, but Certainly not. And also, by the way, as well, we will be getting onto the Ferrari disaster class. I <laughs> I cannot believe I'm this happy in a podcast after what happened to Charles, it's but that's you know. another story to talk about. Um, but you yeah, it was, it was awesome. Mick Schumacher starting 20th, Ouch. Yeah, it's penny just... for his thoughts right now when especially, you know, the, the celebrations in the garage and then he's there starting literally last. Um, he was three seconds nearly. Uh, I think they got it wrong, through. didn't they, slightly with Mick? It seemed yeah. like it was very similar to what Ferrari were do doing and a few other teams where they, they went out too late on the softs, couldn't generate enough tyre temperature mm. to then be putting in good laps. And I think that's kind of what we got the inkling of uh, with the team radio for Mick. But at the same time, it was crazy. There were other teams that made it work better. And yeah. is this going to be the nail in the coffin of his career? I think it will be. Is is. <sighs> Yeah, surely he's not coming back from that, or at least not with Haas. Uh, you know, um, it's a shame. And realistically, it is a strange qualifying session. Um, but it is just a huge headline that he's last and his teammates on pole. So, um, chat are actually saying as well, we're live on Twitch, WTF on official, if you don't follow us already, that Mick went out earlier than Kevin did on the soft tires. So, oh, wow. If that's true, yeah, I'm just going by. What oh, he was actually, yeah, no, because I did actually see that because he, uh, yeah, I saw the 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 picture, the screenshot of Magnuson queuing behind Mick, ready to well, then. his There's ties no on. Excuses, so, unfortunately, yeah, for, Mick for Mick had a shocker. It's one of those sessions where, yeah, he, yeah, if he's that far off, you can't even blame him being wrong part of the track at the wrong time. Then can you? He's so, out there with everyone um, else. Hulkenberg. It will be getting his seat ready now, I imagine. It's a shame as well for both the Alphas, especially Bottas. He was looking really good in dry conditions. Uh, kind of, I say, in, in the one practice session we saw, Bottas was looking 
uh, pretty good. Uh, but unfortunately for them, 17th and 18th, they'll be starting uh, oh, tomorrow's sprint, which, yeah, painful. Latifi did okay, 16th, just... Uh, I was going to say just about f- uh, fell short, but he was actually seven tenths off making it through to Q2. So there was a big chasm uh, between uh, 15th, which was Stroll. Well, actually, no, 15th, sorry. Stro- uh, no, actually, and I'm lying. That's not true. It's still it was, six tenths. It was Daniel Ricciardo. But, yeah. yeah, it was Danny Rick. But either or, we move on to Q2 now, where it was Albon, Gasly, Vettel, Ricciardo, and Stroll that didn't make it out. But this was a much drier session. Got wetter towards the end, didn't it? Which... Actually, it, it was a really confusing session, wasn't it? Because they were like, yep, yeah, team radios were coming in. It's raining quite a lot out here. And then they started going purple at the end. And all of yeah, a sudden, it, it changed again, didn't it? Yeah. Like you say, this session is the perfect level of rain. It's exactly what you want, where it's like, rains a bit, then stops. Rains a bit more, then stops. Then it dries out. So it's basically that perfect weather particularly for a qualifying session, because the order is just going crazy. Like like we just said earlier, Latifi was P1 at one point, then he's out. Um, you know, people were swapping and changing all the time. Alonso popped up in P1, which I was very excited for after putting him in prediction, uh, in my prediction to be on pole, which now um, isn't even a shock pole compared to who's actually on pole. Um, and yeah, the if you look at the actual times, yeah, they were doing like one fourteens um in the first lot and then one elevens in that. So it, it dried out a lot more, but yeah, really surprising at the end when you thought it was over, then suddenly they were kind of going quick again. But I'd say for me, the biggest sort of shock there Hell. is that Aston Martin because Sebastian Vettel, Lance Stroll, good wet weather drivers. You gotta think those kind of conditions is where they should be picking up a, a you know a great result. Um, well, we saw it. Was not. it Turkey 2020? Was it Stroll stuck yep. it on pole? He did. Uh, don't mean to rhyme, but it, it just is natural. Um, but yeah, it, difficult for them. You know, Lance is oh wet weather. Lance Stroll. It's not happened. Um, and for Sebastian Vettel, as you say, yeah, again, thirteenth, not great. Daniel Ricciardo, fourteenth. I mean, that was yeah after a great result in Mexico. It's now back to another poor qualifying compared to his teammate, uh, Lando, who's fourth on the grid uh, tomorrow, which again, you know, he just goes under the radar and just sticks it right where he doesn't belong probably in that McLaren. Uh, mm. Gasly 12th, Albon did a great job in 11th, just missing out once again uh, on on Q3. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think he can be lucky. pretty proud of that, that P11, can't he? Uh, he's and only then a 10th, let... sorry, he's only a 10th oh, off Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, uh, who was, uh, who was very close to to being knocked out. Uh, I think it was Ocon, wasn't it? Yeah, I think, yeah, it looks very close, but yeah, about five hundredths of a second between Albon and Ocon. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. It's incredibly easy to create a free job post on LinkedIn Jobs. All you have to do is add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritise who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash WTF1. That's linkedin.com slash WTF1 to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Uh, so yeah, let's move on to Q3 because a, a lot of things went on that we need to talk about. First... Well, to be fair, it wasn't even just in Q3, was it? Uh, Ferrari were having blunders in most of the the sessions in terms of deciding which tyres to put on. Charles was sat there for a while before they put soft tyres on. And then again, Q3, they put him out on intermediates, which... What? I don't get it. Why do they hate him? Why why do they hate what? him? Because they didn't, even put si- they didn't even put science on them. Like You can understand if they're going no for the gamble. No one! The whole point, right, of everyone queuing up at the end of the pit lane was because rain was coming. 
you don't unless right and this is the shortest if it was spa i'd be like okay i can understand what you, you're thinking you think rain's going to come straight away everyone's going to struggle stick on pole <laughs> brazil's what the fourth shortest circuit i think on the calendar yeah so one minute Th- there's left. no time for it to get wet enough for this to work it is such a slim percentage that this could work that the the safe option is to go out with everyone else on soft tires and try to make it work especially considering the ferraris uh, this year are really good with tire warm-up doesn't help for tire degradation but it helps for them to generate heat into their tires and get them working quicker. And we've seen it so many times in races where Leclerc's look really fast in the first 10 laps of a race and then fallen off behind Verstappen. This is the kind of conditions that would probably work well for a Ferrari, but no, they stick him on intermediates and he's just trundling around. He then blocks Perez for the entire lap, <laughs> which if I'm a Perez fan, I'm fuming, but obviously by the rule book, he's done nothing wrong. Cause they're both on a flying lap, but Oh, just it's an absolute joke of a decision. You, you kind honestly. of put the scenario of Leclerc in the championship fight, and you, uh, my head's coming off. Uh, I would be throwing chairs right now if there was still a championship on. Fortunately, there isn't, but also Ferrari still making another big blunder. I don't understand why, like you say, if if they were in the championship, and you could almost even. <laughs> You could almost even understand it if they were in the championship and they're going for some, you know, say, say like um, Leclerc had to win and Verstappen not get any points or something. And they just go, well, we're not going to beat them. Let's just try something different or or, or do some ridiculous tie gamble like that. Ferrari just need to stay out the of the memes, basically, for the moment. Just do... Be normal. It's that meme of the person that's screaming in the back of the car, like, why can't you just be normal? That's Ferrari. Like, all they had to do was just fall in line with everyone else. Charles probably would have got second or third, and he's in a good result for the sprint and the race. The what are they doing? They do as well from Leclerc what is telling. They? Like, he's yeah. getting sick of all of these mistakes. No, he wouldn't have won the championship this year, even if Ferrari had made zero mistakes. But you think of how Verstappen treated Red Bull after one mistake. Like Leclerc has let so many slip through the net this year. And it's just, it's ridiculous. It's such a bad decision. And it's not like it was a, oh, crash at Silverstone. Do we pit Leclerc from the lead to change tires? This is qualifying. They had plenty of time to think about what they're going to do. But instead, they put the most ridiculous strategy on their best driver and signs who's been performing well, don't get me wrong, but also you know, signs on the <laughs> softs. It doesn't make any sense also, whatsoever. We've not even mentioned that, but they were at the end of the pit lane as well, second in line after Magnussen. So they would have been in prime position to get a very good lap. Mm-hmm. And he's on the wrong tyre. It's, it's, you just can't, like, oh my God. Just when you thought, you know, you, you alluded to it the last time, you know, you saw that bit in Q2 where they were messing about with the tyres and you're like, oh, Ferrari are a joke, but they still got through and you're like, okay, fair enough. And they go and do something stupid immediately in the next session. It's it's it beggars belief. Like, like we've said so many times, they're the team that have all these memes made about them. And it's not, it's not, it's because it keeps happening. It's not just... You don't just do it every time and loads of teams are making mistakes. Ferrari is just happening consistently and it's embarrassing. It's painful to watch. And um, thank God for Kevin Magnussen on pole. Otherwise, I'd probably rant about it for another 20 minutes. So we all know how ExpressVPN protects your privacy and security online, right? But here's something you might not know. You can also use ExpressVPN to unlock movies and shows that are only available in other countries. If you're like me and you've run out of stuff to watch on Netflix, this will change your world. It's so simple to do. I just fire up the ExpressVPN app, change my location, refresh Netflix, and that's it. ExpressVPN lets you control where you want sites to think you're located. You can choose from almost 100 different countries. So just imagine all the Netflix libraries you can go through. But it's not just Netflix. ExpressVPN works with any streaming service. Hulu, BBC iPlayer, YouTube, you name it. 
There are hundreds of VPNs out there, but the reason I use ExpressVPN to watch shows is because it's ridiculously fast. There's never any buffering or lag, and you can stream in HD no problem. So if you want to get access to hundreds of new shows, go to expressvpn.com slash WTF1 right now, and you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's expressvpn.com slash WTF1. expressvpn.com slash WTF1 to learn more. So let's talk <laughs> about KMAG in the Hass. Hass oh did a brilliant strategy a brilliant master plan in q3 we were watching it live on wtf on official and twitch live watch alongs if you want to come uh, join us for tomorrow sunday and also for abu dhabi then please come follow us uh but we noticed straight away k mag at the front of the queue hello what's going on here but still k mag didn't have that much of an advantage that you think he's going to stick it on pole what i did notice was that he had about a sector between himself and the next car behind. And that Thanks, was Charles. telling. That's and Maybe that was... that was what Ferrari did. They put Charles on the Inters to give Kevin Magnussen the gap because Ferrari, big brain strat, they want the feel-good story. Ferrari engine in there. Maybe he was their best chance for pole. So they, they master knew plan. They couldn't get pole. So they were like, how do we make Hass on pole? <laughs> because then big brain strats, their, their engine looks even better. Yeah, because they're like, yeah. well, it can't be the Hass. It must be the end. Look, sarcasm detectors hopefully have gone off for everybody <laughs> listening and watching. If not, uh, obviously, uh, there was not a big master plan here. And it was all thanks not to Charles binning it or Carlos binning it, but George Russell. Yeah. He is having an absolute stinker of a last third of, of an F1 season, by the way. Like, yeah. yes, so he starts third tomorrow. And, he is incredibly yeah. lucky for that. But he's just, he is making a lot of mistakes now, a lot yeah. of crashes. And a lot of errors where, you know, he was Mr. Consistency for most of the year. He's overall, he's still had an amazing year with Mercedes, but it's another mistake for George, which I'm going to let him off for completely because that allowed k to get pole. Yeah, he, he went off. There's a really funny picture of him actually where he's, you can see George smirking uh, at the TV camera and whether that's him looking at Magnuson's pole and he's realized that, or it's the fact that he's in third and, um, you know, that's probably going to open the debate again of should you, should your lap count if you cause a red flag when you've um, caused it? Because let's have that debate. Let's have that debate right now because uh, I said on the watch along, I said, I think I said it in the part of the season which would have benefited Leclerc. So everyone kicked off because I said it at the part where I was like, oh, this, you know, lap time should but i still believe that if you cause a red flag yep. for a mistake like that now it'll be very difficult to work out the finite details of okay a part of your car's come off because of a mistake but you haven't crashed but still causes a red flag yeah like but if you've run over debris or very difficult yeah. to police i think but it doesn't feel right for me that someone that crashes still manages to save a position in a qualifying session personally yeah they do it in indycar and I'm not 100% sure. So if you cause a yellow, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yellow flags kind of neutralize the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indycar. So yeah, it's um one of those one of those things. It's just I guess it'd just be so hard to police, but it does happen a lot. It's it's not like one of those things where it happens only once. You know, it seems to happen a lot recently, and we've had this debate quite a few times. So hmm. also, if there's anyone out there that put a bet on Kevin Magnuson for pole position. Oh, my word. Please share that screenshot with us yeah. because I, that, I bet there are some serious winnings out there. Yeah, because that must have at least been 500 to one, if not more. That's that's ridiculous. And just someone in the chat said it, and I was like, yeah, that's a very good point. Um, oh. Says the Leclerc fan. Yes, look, hair spam. Look, I'm saying anyone, even if it's Charles Leclerc that bins it, should have his lap time deleted from that qualifying session. It, it just makes makes sense um mm -hmm. anyway uh, other q3 moments was yeah george making that mistake wanted to be pushed out of the gravel which i love i love it when f1 drivers try that it's like please can you push me out and it's so funny because you saw the angle away from the car and he was so beached not even <laughs> like spun Marshall around pushing him. and then and then oh, beached my, it someone said two thousand to one oh, that can't be right crimsy some Surely other people are, the odds were two thousand to some people are saying no. 66 to one 50 to one it depends. Maybe it, maybe one. at the start of the day it would be would have been really high, but yeah, it's mad. Dude betted yeah. one euro and got five hundred. Yeah, so um, 
yeah, but George was very much beached and they're not allowed to push them out of the gravel anyway. But I love how they try it every time. Oh, no, just come on. Just let me let me go. Come on. And the tractor's just arriving like, here we go. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. That was um, the moment there, wasn't it? That you you knew because that's when you know the red flag came out, the rain came down, they disabled DRS and obviously Magnuson had DRS. Um, so, yeah unbelievable scenes and the scenes by the way in the half garage at the end were absolutely outrageous phenomenal um yeah the fact that that team has gone through so much and see magnuson who let's remember wasn't even in the car at the start of the first test he was out of formula one and he's got a pole position uh in, in formula a one in a has this has to be one of the, like you say, the the only more shocking thing is probably Latifi getting pole because Haas is, they've never they're the, you know one of the only teams on the grid that don't have a podium. I think they're the only team on the grid actually that don't have a podium. So, uh, yeah, wild, absolutely crazy scenes. Uh, probably worth mentioning as well for Stappen just there on the front row of the grid as he does uh still put in a, a, a really decent lap i think he said he locked up which cost him uh pole position uh lando <laughs> imagine if fourth. max had done it again by the way you know because he was the one that denied george russell that pole in the williams and you know even and as a max fan i'd just be like please max just, just don't. don't come yeah. on second's fine um wins. absolutely uh he's got a tough we'll... challenge tomorrow to, to uh be beat a Haas. But well, he's got George Russell behind him. Is the Mercedes going to be quick one. enough? Not George sure. Russell as well, yeah. Well, if George and Max accidentally wipe each other out, Kevin Magnussen... <laughs> if where... George, if Magnussen and Russell wipe each other out, we've got a Magnussen-Norris 1-2, potentially, <laughs> which is <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, and it's only a 23-lap race. <clears throat> it's not yeah. that bad. It's not that bad. Not that long. Where, where mm. can K-Mag finish? That's the big question. Where do you think he's going to finish tomorrow, Tommy? Uh, in the sprint, mm-hmm. uh, he will finish sixth, seventh, maybe. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna bet on it being wet. Oh yeah, it could be. And actually. I'm gonna I'm gonna say P1. Oh, that would be unbelievable. <laughs> Can you Please, imagine he wins manifest the everything? That would be. I'm I'm fully put manifesting that uh, into into the world. Uh, chat are getting involved. P5, P1, 9th, 8th, top 5, 6th, top 5, P4, uh, P2, 3rd, 3rd, 6th. Interesting. Uh, I can't wait to I can't wait to watch watch this. It's going to be great. Uh, yeah. Hamilton, Perez, Leclerc, 8th, 9th, and 10th. That's going to be great to watch those uh, drivers come through. They've got Alonso ahead of them. Ocon as well. Did a good job in P6. So, yeah. Is that about it? Have we covered qualifying, Tommy? I think we have. We're never Can going Kevin to be Magnuson able to... Can Kevin win the Brazilian Grand Prix? <laughs> We're never going to be able to do it justice of just how insane it is that Kevin Magnuson is on pole in a house. But someone in the chat, by the way, meatball flag. Is he going to get one? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Damages his wing. Get, going side by side. In fact, uh, I'm calling it now. I might even put this clip online. Um, if anyone's seen our F1 manager video where Magnuson goes for it, calling it now. Magnuson going for it, a lunge to try and take P1 back from Verstappen at like turn one on lap two or something <laughs> oh, <laughs> rather than just settling me. for points i oh, can't wait to see it but yeah hopefully he doesn't get a meatball flag it's gonna be <laughs> oh dear i'm me. just I like... mean, to be fair maybe he's been preparing all of these moves for this moment yeah like he he's, he's got happen. them all wrong before to get them right for the brazilian grand prix sprint i'm just smiling from ear to ear right now this this is like i just love f1 when it's like this and it almost it makes the moments more sweet. The fact that, you know, we've not had these shocks all year. I'd love to have had them more, but the fact that we've not had any shocks and then suddenly bang, Kevin Magnuson on pole in the house. What? And it just makes it like unbelievable. And I just can't stop smiling because it's like, I cannot believe that's just happened. It's it makes it feel love. even better. Doesn't it? The fact yeah. that it's been, a, I mean, we don't like the fact it's been a long time since the last shock, I suppose. But also, yeah. 
the longer we go, the better it feels. And K-Mag on pole is just something none of us could have ever predicted, even with our crazy predictions that we sometimes put out on social media. This is just an amazing underdog story. I cannot wait to watch the entire episode on Drive to Survive uh, when it comes out because it needs it needs the underdog hero story there. Gunter Steiner, him walking off the pit wall, arms in the yeah. air, K Man getting celebrated, uh, celebrating with his mechanics in the in the garage. It was ah uh, unbelievable. Um, so yeah, uh, absolutely love it. Tommy, amazing. Final thoughts. Final thoughts. Uh, I've got no words anymore. It's just you just can't put it into words. What an amazing day that is for formula one i guess i'd say that said it at the time but when magnuson had put it on pole um and the rain was coming down i've never been more glad to not see any formula one cars go out for eight minutes for the rest of the yeah, session we were because both we were praying, praying that it was going to be over which is wild and i think the crowd were as well because you know they got an amazing uh absolutely amazing reception so I just, I just can't believe that we get the sprint tomorrow. We're going to see a Haas starting from pole position. I'm absolutely gutted. I'm not doing the sprint tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> I abs- as if this is the one time. I'm one not watch along, and there's a Haas on pole. Or the sprint watch along, and Kevin Magnussen's on pole for Christ's sake. Oh uh, well, we'll have to get a re- recording of my reaction watching it or something. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, my final thoughts are. Kevin Magnuson P1 tomorrow and on Sunday. Let's go. <laughs> Here we go. The Haas train has fully arrived. Uh, uh-huh. Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. Thanks for tuning in on uh, live on, on Twitch as well. WTF1 official if you don't follow us already. And, uh, yeah, we'll we'll, um, we'll we'll see you tomorrow live on Twitch uh, for the sprint and also live on Twitch again on Sunday uh, for the, the main race and Internet Special Reactions. All that content that you know and love will be returning very soon. Lots of love. See you soon. Take care. Adios. Kevin Magnuson on pole. Bye! Bye!